Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. So today I am joined by the amazing Tommy Wyatt. Tommy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing very well. I am very excited to have you here. Now, Tommy, before we talk about why you're here, I would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, Tommy is the author of Now That's What I Call Horror, which was published in Gut Slut Press. Uh, so Who's Courage from Bullshit Lit. Take This Quiz uh, with was Ghost City Press, um, as well as many others. And now he's currently working on writing about disassociation and things that go bump in the night with many influences from his cats, Mimi, Cosmo, Pina, and Skitty. So um, now, when what got you started in writing? What made you want to say, you know what, this is the career I want. This is what I want to do with my life. Uh, writing is something that's just always stuck with me. It's probably been the only uh, hobby or medium that I felt closely connected to because I would try other forms of art, uh, primarily like drawing or painting, and it just never stuck, never clicked. Um, it just didn't feel like the correct mouthpiece, I guess, so to speak. And um, I ended up taking more classes in high school for writing, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, okay. a good snowball, of course, <laughs> but, um, I just decided that I wanted to continue on and see where it would take me, if anywhere. Right. Well, I mean, it's good that you can live out something that you've been doing since you were so young. And for those of you that haven't already, I have all of Tommy's social media links down in the description. So make sure you're following them on all of their social media the platforms, as well so you can check out some of the literature. And you have a couple things coming up, like we said, you know, with dissociation and things that go bump in the night. What are some of your influences on writing? Sure. So um, I'm pretty inspired by my colleagues, uh, specifically Nat Rom. Uh, who is the author of a plethora of books, including You Stupid Slut, that came out last year with Dream Boy um, Book Club. And um, I know that they have a title forthcoming with Bullshit Lit as well in July. Um, oh, cool. Random Access Memory, I do believe. Awesome. And it's always good when you can have peers that influence you just as much as anybody else does. Like, that's always a huge bonus to anything like that. So... Um, when we're talking about, you know, some of the writing that you've done, what, where can people find some of the writing at? Is it available online or is it all only for order? Yeah, so I have several loose leaf poems that are available online. Um, I think over a hundred, I would say. Um, I have some in print, but it's more selective comparative to the online works um, that are free to read at any time. And okay. my chapbook forthcoming with Ghost City Press is set for release on June 30th, and that is all free to read as well. All right, so I have those links down in the description as well. So um, everybody could check all of that out. Now, in order for you to write about these type of things, horror had to start for you somewhere, Tommy. So I'd like to go back to the past and talk about what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie. And Tommy, the first horror movie that you watched was... Yeah, the first horror movie I watched was The House of Wax. Um, I chose to watch it. I think I was about eight or so. I was in third grade. I thought it would be a good idea to watch on my own. <laughs> and it was a little scary for an eight-year-old, I would say. Um, the wax and everything and how the body parts and you know just come off from the wax. It was, it was a little much, but definitely entertaining. So I have to ask, we are talking about the 2005 Paris Hilton, Chad Michael Murray one, not the Vincent Price role, correct? 2005, the remake, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, and it's funny because I've never talked about this movie on the podcast until about three weeks ago. And now it's I've taught, we did a Versus episode on it. It was somebody else's first horror movie. So I had to go back and revisit the film. And it really does take a lot of what I love in a remake. It takes, you know, some of the basic ideas of the original and it makes it its own. You know, there's... You, call, you could call it a remake, but I think this is more of a reimagining. Because there's very little that this has in common with Vincent Price's House of Wax. And I do love how they created a character in this movie and they named him Vincent. I thought that was wonderful. Like, that was a cool nod to Vincent Price. So, we know you were quite young the first time that you had watched it. But which scene would you say it was that affected you the most from House of Wax? Oh, it was definitely when Wade's chin just came off because I was afraid of the name Wade for like way too long. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I remember that sticking with me way more than the Paris Hilton scene for some reason. But yeah. 
And it's funny because that's something else that I've been bringing up when we talk about this film. And if you guys have watched the other episodes, I apologize for repeating myself. But the worst part of this movie was the marketing because this movie was literally marketed as, hey, you guys hate Paris Hilton, so we're going to kill her. Come watch it. And it didn't do much justice to the fact that this is a very well done film with fucking phenomenal practical effects. The practical effects in this film are, I mean, Robert Zemeckis, who is one of my favorite, you know, he's Back to the Future, What Lies Beneath, had a huge part in producing this film. And it is just, the practical effects in it are top tier, top notch. So, and that moment you're talking about is almost played for laughs at first. It's like, Wade, get off the piano. And then he starts touching him and trying to take it. Mm -hmm. He's ripping it and Wade's crying. Then you have our buddy Vincent come in, like you said, and cut the rest of his face off. And it's just like, oh my God, that's rough. Like, what a rough way for the and it's Jared Padalecki, you know, like you see, especially now, you see like Jared Padalecki, you're like, oh, it's gonna be your final guy. He's killed, like he's one of the first major deaths in the film. So that's another part that you're just like, wow, that really took me by surprise. Oh, for sure. And I haven't seen this movie in 18 years. So I'm really shocked by how much I can remember. Uh it's definitely one that I plan on revisiting sometime soon. It's just uh I think it really had such a lasting impact on me when I first saw it. Um, Cause I remember right after I saw the movie, I went to go take a shower and I took a hot shower of course. And I was worried my skin was going to melt off like it did for Wade. And uh, that was like such a really impactful moment. I didn't really anticipate, I don't think, but I guess right. who would anticipate that? <laughs> I don't think anybody really anticipates like, the level of brutality that comes along with this film. Because like I said, this was marketed, like I remember watching the trailers and being like, I have absolutely no interest in watching this movie. You know, 19 year old me was like, I'm good. I'm out. I have no interest because like I said, all I thought was, hey, they're going to have a little teen drama, barely horror movie where I get to watch Paris Hilton die. And then you watch it and you're like, wow. They're, like I said, the movie to this day blows me away with the meticulousness they put into their practical effects with all the different sculptures and things like that. So um, we talk about which scene it was, Tommy, that affected you the most, but what would you say your favorite scene from House of Wax is? Favorite? Um, I'm not sure if I really had one because when I did see the movie, it, it was just very, very frightening for uh, an eight-year-old child to watch. Right. I don't really think I had a favorite. It's more like which one was most horrific um, and that stuck with me, which was the scene with Wade. Um, I did enjoy the rest of the movie, especially when it ended. But I think that's just a different reason. Um, but uh, there's definitely other movies I've seen since then that I, I've enjoyed and didn't feel as strongly uh, frightened by, I would say. Right. <laughs> Well, and, and another big thing about this movie is there's a lot of moments that even now I'm like, like um, when they capture Wade, the way they capture him is by taking the scissors and cutting through his Achilles heel and you're just, or his Achilles tendon, I'm sorry. And you're just like, oh my gosh, no, thank you. I'm out. I hate seeing stuff like that. And um, we, I mean, in this movie, you get to actually see them turn him into wax, like spraying the wax on him and actually turning him into one of the wax figures so um another question i've been asking since this isn't part of a franchise i can't ask you if this is your favorite in the franchise because well it's the only one in the franchise but um 2005 you know it's almost been 20 years is this a movie you would like to see them try to remake again today i think that would be interesting if it was remade there's been enough time passed and uh Remakes these days uh, take way less time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I definitely think it could be interesting, uh, but they would have to top those special effects. And that's uh, something that a lot of movies don't seem to dive into as much. Um, that's where my I can't fear say would that. be. Sorry. I, I would be very scared that they wouldn't put the meticulous care into practical effects. I feel like they would use more CGI and stuff now. Mm -hmm. That's my fear. Because even in 2005, like you watch the other movies that were coming out then and how bad the CGI looked in horror movies then. And then you watch House of Wax. And that's the my biggest prize about this movie is how great the practical effects look. And it gets a W in my book just for that alone. Oh, definitely. Um, so have you seen the original House of Wax, the Vincent Price one? I haven't. Uh, that's on my list. I think I'm going to watch that before I rewatch the 2005 remake. Well, I can tell you they are completely different films. So you're going to get two completely different viewing experiences. And that's what I respect again about the 2005 version as a remake. They made it their own. 
they didn't just you know shot for shot uh use uh cgi instead of practical effects like they they really loved what they were doing on set with the 2005 one and you could tell there was a lot of love and care that went into it it wasn't just a cash grab like it was uh promoted as now we talked about house of wax 2005 and how that's the first horror movie that you watched tommy that's what got you into the genre but now i want to throw a little bit of a curveball here at you for a second my little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Tommy? Uh, what is oh. your favorite horror movie of all time? Favorite? Now that's that's a hard one. Um, I would probably have to say The Evil Dead, the original, uh, okay. because I really like the lore it set up for the uh next films and even the tv show spinoff and uh what's currently happening in the franchise and i think it's really interesting and i really like the cheesiness and campiness in the mm -hmm. original 80s film that permeates throughout except it's not in the latest um iteration of the films which i think is really interesting what uh path they're taking here with the with the franchise uh, we talked about remakes this whole episode, and Evil Dead 2013 is my all-time favorite. Um, I think that that remake is so impeccable. Like, it's it's close to a perfect movie. Like, I love how it's not just kids going out to party in the woods. Like, they have a good reason to go there. Like, we're going to get your sister off dope. We're going to get our best friend off dope. We're not going to let her leave. Like, that's why they don't leave the cabin. Like, it's just the premise is so good, and they kept enough from the original to keep, like I said, even though it's in different timelines, what they say is not really a remake. It's like a reimagining because they're still taking place in the same timelines. But to me, it's just like that's that's the way you do a remake. You know, Ash Williams, already been done. You can't touch him. No one can be Ash again. So don't even attempt it. Create your own lore. And I, and I was a big fan of Evil Dead Rise. I think Evil Dead Rise did enough to honor the old movies like the eyeball in the mouth and you know mentioning how there's different um volumes of the necronomicon i thought that was amazing and um i'm really glad that you're a big evil dead fan because i think it's one of the best franchises you know for me it's child's play evil dead and yeah, scream is probably the top mm -hmm. three in my opinion so like it's really cool to see some uh evil dead love out there too so um couldn't pick a better film that's, that's a great movie to have as your favorite Oh, it is so good. I actually saw, again, the original Evil Dead. I saw it very recently at an outdoor movie theater. And seeing it with that experience made me just fall in love with it again. So I really appreciate having that. Yeah, it's a fantastic movie. So we've talked about your first horror movie. And we've talked about your favorite horror movie, Tommy. But before I let you go, I do want to bounce back to House of Wax. And I think I know the answer to this question before I ask it. But it's in my script. So I got to ask. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to rank House of Wax on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking it on acting, production, score, direction, nothing like that. What we're doing here is strictly ranking House of Wax on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, Tommy, what would your ranking of House of Wax be? Oh, I would absolutely say four and a half because it affected me to such a deep level that I would I couldn't even consider returning to the film until almost 20 years later. Because um, I'm just now thinking I should probably rewatch it because it's probably not as uh, horrifying as my memory is serving. Absolutely not, because I was an eight-year-old versus a 26-year-old <laughs> seeing it. So. Right. And it, it's funny, because especially when it's your first time, you don't understand the depth of how scary what you're seeing really, really is. So I think that that's another thing, and our imagination can sometimes play tricks on us, sure. you know, and to where it goes and how it goes there. So I do want to remind everybody, I have all of their social media links down in the description. So make sure that you are following Tommy on social media so you can stay up to date on everything he has coming up for us in the future. And you can check out some of the things that he has done in the past. Um, on top of that, if there's anything else that you ever want to have on the show, please let us know. We would love to have you back on to talk about some of the upcoming books that you have. And the best way for you guys to stay up to date on that, like I said, is following them on social media. And those links are right down in the description. So, uh, Tommy, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Um, everyone else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel more than you could possibly know. As well as follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media link. On social media, all our links are in the description below. So, thank you guys so much. Uh, and until next time, 
keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.